Hello, once again. Katha Love 80, Christianity and Catharism. This is really part C also of the uh, uh, Cathar Revolution. Of course, Cathar, the medieval Cathars, were, was a religion. It was a Gnostic Christian religion. And it had, it had evolved from the, the uh, early primitive Christians, which the Cathars say they were as much as possible like the early followers of Jesus. The some call them primitive religions. This is because before St. Paul grabbed hold of it and uh, he turned it into and brought in some Greek uh, Hellenic teachings and he made the Christianity and formed the Christianity as we know it today. But the Cathars, uh, they weren't into uh, a lot of Paul's teachings, uh, such as Paul's uh, you know, wives be subservient to your husbands, uh, slaves be subservient to your masters. I think with wives there's some about, at least there's three quotes that I'm aware of where you're told to be subservient, women to be subservient to your husbands, and there's uh, at least nine quotes where it says that slaves obey your masters even if your master is a harsh master. Well, uh, Cathars weren't, they don't believe that was Christian. The, the, the Cathar, to, from the Cathar point of view of early primitive Christianity was uh, the admonition by Christ that uh, love, thy, love thy neighbor as thyself. And this was at the very, very heart of Gnosticism where you loved your neighbour as you loved yourself well, is also a advice to learn to love yourself and in fact uh, learning to love yourself is, is, is seems simple but it's not because it takes probably for most people around about 40 45 years before you really getting to understand yourself who you really are and what you're really about and where your deep feelings lie um, it's taken this time and sometimes it takes a lifetime to, to really understand your own identity and also uh, but it's it's telling you to to be in love with yourself this is catharism it's about you but it but not just loving yourself which you should be doing you should be very very uh, happy and pleased with being in your own skin and that's a bit hard unless we don't, if you don't know you haven't really got to understand your identity but the other thing is to love your neighbour uh, as yourself. Now, so many people, I'm, I'm quite surprised at how many there are, really have a dislike for themselves or aspects about of themselves. And they also have a, a very strong dislike of their neighbour, uh, let alone strangers. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, she was Japanese and uh, she uh, was getting on in her 30s and she said to me, John, uh, if you're doing the I Ching, uh, oh, she asked me, she said, would you do the I Ching for me and ask the I Ching, I've talked about the I Ching before, uh, this is the, 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 uh, the I Ching is the, possibly something, one of the oldest books in the world, certainly the, probably the oldest Chinese book. And it's a book of wisdom, but you can also use it for getting advice, metaphysical or paranormal advice from the Yijing. And uh, so she asked me, why is it that I can't find a guy to marry? So I put that question to the Yijing. I cast the Yijing and we came back with a hexagram, uh, some yins and yangs. And it said simply that If you can't love yourself, why should you expect somebody else to love you? So that was the advice from Yi Jing. And it got to the, the thing that was very direct. If you can't love yourself, why should you expect somebody else to love you? And I said to my friend, I stopped. And I thought that was a bit odd, because I thought she liked herself. 
And she said, no, I, I don't. I don't like myself. She said, in fact, I, I can't even stand being on my own company. I have to have other people around me all the time. I, I just don't even like being by myself. And I, I was quite surprised. So I said, look, really, yeah, we all have to learn to learn who we are and really got to know each other, uh, know ourselves and love ourselves. Anyway, there's a happy ending because she did get married and also she's had a child. So uh, that's wonderful. But this, 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 love your neighbour as yourself. Uh, this is critical. So, fine. This is primitive Christianity and the, the medieval Cathars. They believed that they were close, or they were they were basically unchanged since those early times of Christ. It was the church that had changed, put up its buildings and taxing people and growing powerful and. Uh, ruling nations and uh, throwing and dethroning emperors and all this power and the Cathars were at the exact opposite of the power and of course the church was feudal they had the Pope, the cardinals, bishops and so forth and the thing about the, the Cathars was that they were egalitarian everybody was equal it doesn't matter whether you're born as a lord or you're born as a, as, as a, as a farmer once you're a Cathar Everybody was equal, male and, and also there was no one subservient to anybody, wives or anybody else. In fact, they weren't even, they didn't even care about marriage. If you loved the person, that was fine. If you didn't, that was it. But that was the whole point. Not whether you got a piece of paper and you were married. It was whether you had a loving relationship. So, <coughs> so subservience from the point of, from the, from the Cathar point of view, being subservient to anybody. Uh, let alone a woman to her husband. Subservience was out of the question. You did not submit to anybody. And you don't, and they also didn't have oaths of allegiance to anybody because they did not have allegiance to anybody. They were free. The, so this is all very revolutionary in a society that is feudal, the feudal system, you know, emperor, king, uh, lord, knight, uh, going right down to the serf, the slave, we've got our pope, the cardinal, etc, etc. These are feudal systems. Everybody belongs to somebody or owes allegiance to somebody else. And the Cathars said, not interested. We don't, we don't uh, have oaths to anybody, of allegiance to anybody. The other thing is that separated and agnostic Christians was that Gnostics, because one of the basis, bases of Gnosticism, in most cases, I won't say all, because there are some very strange Gnostics, you know, uh, may I say, because people do all manners of things and they call it Gnosticism, uh, which in many cases is not really true. But like Plato, uh, they, even modern science, uh, the Big Bang, where did the Big Bang come from? The Big Bang is a particle, and a particle exploded, and all things came into being. And this is our Big Bang Theory. That's fine. But where did the particle come from? So there's something there. There is an origin of everything, a source. Even the particle, that particle that exploded became the Big Bang and created matter and the universes, or the universes as we know it, there had to be in a beginning. So Plato, Socrates, people like this, and they said there obviously has to be a source of these things. It's beyond our knowing, but we recognize it. But they also mostly agree it was a loving act to bring creation into existence. <coughs> Now, so this is the this is the ultimate creator. Uh, I heard a Christian the other night, and he was uh, on a program, and uh, he was American. Uh, he was black. He was a professor, uh, very very smart, very erudite, and uh, amusing. Uh, great way of expressing himself, himself. And he talked about basic 
Christianity as to what it should be about the poor, not the rich and the corporations and the powerful. You know, Christianity to him was about how the, 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 the lesser in our society got on, how you looked after these people, how they managed uh, so they had a decent life as, as best you could provide for them. And he was saying how, you know, this is real Christianity. But the one thing he did say was that God, the Christian God, is in our image and likeness. In other words, a personal God in our image and likeness. So this is just not on to a, to a, the Gnostic Cathars because theirs is an unknown source. But, and also, this unknown source, it might be unknown, but all that came into existence had a spark of that divine spark and there is a loving, a, a love between the, the source and the souls of the divine sparks and there is no way that the source is going to damn or well, there's damnation for any of their creation. The, the, the creation, the you and I and his and her and them, <coughs> ultimately will live our lives. Uh, we'll do our cycles of reincarnation until we get our act together. We learn to love our own identity and love others and assist others. And ultimately, there's a happy ending for all because we'll all ultimately return to the source. No one is going to hell, and certainly not for eternity. And uh, so it's not about punishment. It's about learning. It's about karma. It's about karma, not karma to punish you. Because, uh, as I've said before, uh, you've broken someone's heart, and you could have your heart broken. It's not to punish you for breaking somebody else's heart. It's so you'll understand the pain, the anguish, the hurt that you put that person through. Now you understanding because it's happening to you but it's not this karma is not there as punishment but it is there for you to learn to understand and happily if you do know and you have learnt and you do understand you're not going to do it in the future you're going to have more compassion for the person that you're involved with so th these are these are, are, are major things and of course uh, this as Christianity, at the time of Christ, his ideas, love yourself and your neighbour, be kind, uh, this, was, this was revolutionary. Catharism in, in the, 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 the first millennium, this was extremely revolutionary. So, <coughs> and even today, I mean today, uh, it's really... Uh, Today, so much of the world has become grasping. I want this for me or my family. You know, it doesn't matter about other people. Even when I was a kid, people here in Australia and a lot around the world cared for others. Uh, of course, uh, people do it today, and uh, thankfully, uh, it, it hasn't gone out of fashion. There are still people who are doing amazing things for other people and assisting other people. Uh, but at the same time, the plain fact is that a certain percentage of the world, 20%, 25%, owns about 90% of the world. And most of the people in the world are not having a, a, a very good time of it. And I don't know, at a time there's been so many small wars and conflicts and have given rise to so many refugees and this is becoming a real dilemma. So from a Cathar point of view, the Christian point of view, you know, it's it's we have need love and tolerance and compassion and we do what we can to assist. Catharism is it's against war. It's uh, very similar there's similarities to Buddhism, but uh, at the moment the Buddhists are not having a bit of art. There's there's, there's uh, Buddhists within Buddhists who are unhappy with the way things are going, and there's other Buddhists which are uh, creating uh, refugees in, in uh, Myanmar. So 
all is not loving there is according they're not all going according to theory but certainly with the Cathar and if people move in towards that direction it is it is the very opposite of power in fact uh, it's it's about caring and sharing uh, and it's about you doing this it's not you're trying to spread the word or bring other people into Catharism it's simply about you and you learning to identify yourself uh, self-realization self-love and by you being an example that's all you have to be you don't have to be out uh, like Christians and Muslims trying to bring as many as you can into the fold people who are going to be Cathars and wish to be into that particular will eventually arrive at that <coughs> and when they're there Catharism is simply there waiting to welcome you uh, there's no need to push it down anyone's throat my job from, uh, as I see it is simply to make people aware that there is such a thing as Catharism uh, it uh, gives you a second opinion uh, it's there if you wish to be involved and wish to use it and my word so my job is basically just to to spread the the, the idea of Catharism from that point onwards it's it's up to the individual so it's uh, there's a little bit of a rebel and a revolu revolutionary in most of us and uh, Certainly those of us with a little, bit, little uh, passion and those of us who want to see a change for good in the world. On that note, I will say goodbye for now.